Hi, my name is Sam. I'm the teen librarian at Bay County Public Library. And today we're going to make Viking beards and learn some fun Norse mythology facts afterwards. All right, let's get started. So here's our beard. Okay, and you can see that it has a mustache added to it. So this is actually really easy to do. So we'll get started with the ribbon that goes around our head. So I've just got some regular, I have bought some kind of wide ribbon and you're going to have to pull out enough to go around your head and tie comfortably because you want it to be snug. Okay, but you want to be able to get it off your head because you, but you can still untie it too. So here's a piece I pre-cut and actually got started adding the beard because we're going to add the beard before we add the mustache. Okay. All right, so yarn, we're gonna need yarn. A uh, fun fact, Thor is known for having blonde hair because of the Marvel movies and comics, but in actual mythology, he has red hair and a red beard. Okay, so you can see how we got started. So what you're gonna do is first you're gonna cut out a piece of yarn. So. You're going to want to do about two times the length of the beard that you're wanting to make. So you got to think about how long your beard's going to be, okay? So this beard's going to be this long, but you want to cut twice that length for the yarn because you're going to be looping it, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and cut a piece. You can always trim it later if it doesn't line up too. cut a piece. Let me see if it's going to be about that length. It'll be a little longer, but I can always trim it, like I said. And I recommend leaving out a piece of yarn cut to the length that you want so you can measure each piece of yarn against it so you don't have to go back and trim as much. All right, so this is how we start the knot. So you're going to put you're going to loop the yarn like this, tie it, double it in half, so you can see what I did. Alright, so, what you're going to end up doing is looping it under and through the ribbon. Okay, like under and through in the ribbon, so. Okay, so you can see how I've laid it down. Okay, so take your ends and put it through the loop of your yarn. Okay, everybody can see what I'm doing. And you just tie it like that. You know, it may take a couple tries to get the hang of it, but once you, once you get it, it's actually pretty easy. And you're gonna kind of squish all of your yarn together so you don't see the ribbon through it. Okay, just do the same thing. I'm gonna do it one more time. So you can see what I'm doing. Cut a piece of yarn, folded it in half, okay, lay it under your ribbon, okay, there's the loop, ends, take the ends, feed it through the loop, and pull it through, okay, everybody can still see what I'm doing, okay, pull it over. Okay. All right. So you're going to keep doing that all the way. Now I didn't do my beard all the way down the yarn. But you can if you want a more fuller beard. Okay. So you can go to about here maybe. Probably a pretty good beard length. All right, now let's talk about the mustache. Okay, so I'm going to try and show you how the mustache looks on this beard. So, this is the back of the beard. This is the side that goes against your mouth. And you can kind of see how I tied the mustache to the beard. This was actually done with fishing line. Okay, because I like fishing line because it's smaller and it's clear so you don't see it as much. 
can take your beard and I prefer to do tie the fishing line on the front of your beard so that whichever side you, you're going to choose that is going to be the front of your beard. Which side do you think looks best as the front of your beard? Okay. Um, so you take some fishing line and you're not going to cut a huge piece but you want enough to be able to tie knots because you can trim the, the, the rest of the line off of the knots later. Okay. piece. All right, so the way this works is you've got the front of your beard here because the mustache kind of has to hang down in front of your front of your beard, right? Because that's how mustaches work. They go over your lip. So basically what you'll do is you kind of eyeball it. You'd hold up your beard. I'm going to use my my full beard for this. What you would do is hold up your beard and you're going to end up tying it in a way like this here and here so that it hangs just above your beard so it'll be above your lip when you when it's hanging from your face okay everybody can kind of see that because you want it to hang above the beard all right so all you have to do is So there's the front of my beard. Just tie it on. I know it's a little hard to tie on. And again, this will be easier when you've got your full beard so you can kind of tell where it really needs to go. But make sure you're tying it onto the ribbon, not the yarn. Because you'll have, when you actually tie this, you're going to have your full beard right here. So you're kind of tying it in between the pieces of yarn. And again, you may you may need to trim it when you're done. That's okay. I know fishing line can be a little bit difficult to tie sometimes. But I would make sure to double knot it when you're doing this. because you want to make sure your mustache stays on. Okay, it's okay if it squishes the ribbon. And just do the same thing, I won't tie both, but you'll do the same thing on the other side, okay? Again, I'll let you take a look at my beard to get a good idea. So again, here's my mustache tied to the ribbon and here are all my pieces of yarn and now when you do the mustache you're going to tie it onto the fish line the same way that you tied on the beard the same loop okay you just might have to make smaller loops that's all and I'll cut a little piece of yarn and again you can trim it when you're done to match whatever length you like. Kind of trim up your beard a little bit. Okay, so I'll go ahead and I'll do one on this mustache just to show you. So again, uh, double, you know, double the length of whatever mustache you want. Fold it. Loop it under the fishing line. Everybody can see what I'm doing. And pull the strings through. And just tie it on. If you have any questions about this beard, I'm always willing to answer them. You can call us at 850-522-2118. That's the youth services number. Or you can email me. My email is going to be at the end of this video in some of the slides. All right. So we're going to move on to some fun Norse mythology facts. What is Norse mythology? 
Norse mythology is a collection of stories that once made up the religious beliefs of the people of Scandinavia during the Middle Ages. Scandinavia usually refers to the countries Norway, Sweden, and Denmark. Yggdrasil. Pronounced Yggdrasil, it was an enormous ash tree that supported all of the worlds in Norse mythology. There were actually several worlds. Uh, one of them was Asgard, this was where the gods lived and where Valhalla was located. We'll talk about Valhalla in a few minutes. Midgard was Earth, where humans lived. There were other wor worlds that were home to frost giants, light elves, dark elves, dwarves, and so forth. And there was an underworld for the dead. An eagle lived at the top of the tree studying the universe while a dragon lived at the bottom chewing on a root. A squirrel named Ratatosk ran up and down the tree carrying insults and lies back and forth between the two. Gods and Goddesses Odin, he was king of the gods and, and was associated with war, runes, and poetry. He was a mysterious god known for always seeking knowledge and even giving up an eye for it. He had two ravens that would fly around the world and bring secrets back to him. He liked to travel disguised in a cloak. Frigg, she was queen of the gods and was associated with knowledge, marriage, prophecy, and the household. Thor, he was the son of Odin. He was the god of thunder and lightning and he was known as the strongest of the gods. He wielded a hammer called Mjolnir, which always hit its target when he threw it and it would always return to him. He often fought giants in order to protect the gods and he rode in a chariot pulled by goats. Loki. He was the son of a giant but lived with the gods and was known for being cunning and mean. Associated with tricks and mischief, he could shapeshift into other people and animals. He usually caused a lot of trouble for the gods, but he was known to help them from time to time as well. Freya. A beautiful goddess, she was associated with love and magic. She and her brother Frey, a god of agriculture, were both usually peace-loving gods connected to nature. Though Freya was sometimes associated with war and death, she also rode in a chariot pulled by cats. Valkyries. The Vikings and other people who believed in the Norse tales believed that if someone died bravely in battle, they would go to live with the gods. Valkyries, who are sometimes the daughters of gods and sometimes human women chosen by Odin for their bravery, would ride down out of the sky on flying horses and pick up the fallen warriors. They would fly them to Valhalla, which was located in Asgard. Valhalla was a hall where the warriors would feast and fight for fun. The following slides contain a selection of suggested fiction and nonfiction reads for the summer. All of these books can be found in the Northwest Regional Library System collection. There is also a slide at the end about our Percy Jackson Facebook challenge. <laughs>